Hello and welcome. Today we will discuss about Malthus model for unconstrained growth or decay. Malthusian growth model, as known as simple exponential growth model, are used to model population growth with no individuals arrive or depart, and the only change comes from the birth and death. So, we are interested in population variable as function of time. The model states that rate of change of the population is directly proportional to the number of individuals in the population. Rate of change of the population could be written as dp dt, and the number of individuals is p. So, this statement could be written as this equation, as we add a constant r. We call the constant as rate of change, and the quantity of r is time inverse as the left-hand side of the equation as quantities of amount per time. If the value of r is more than zero, the phenomenon called growth as the amount goes to infinity. If the value of r is less than zero, the phenomenon called decay as the amount goes to zero. So, let's draw the diagram of the model. First, we have p and its value affected by its own growth over time. So, we draw some loop symbol here. The growth itself are dependent on the population and growth rate R. As we want to write codes from this model, we need to understand how the calculation works especially for finite difference method. We use this finite difference equation to match the model situation. So, population after is equal to population before plus growth. Because the populations will be saved in an array variable, we use this iterator i in the code. So population i plus 1 equals to population i plus growth rate times population i times delta t. Here we must add delta t to match the quantities. Remember that growth rate has the quantities of time inverse. Let's go to our Google Core to write down our code. So let's write down our code. Here I have imported the NumPy package because we will use an array and I have imported the matplotlib to make some graph. Let's say we want to simulate the growth of bacteria population for 48 hours with initial population of 100 and growth rate of 0.1. For finite difference method, we will need to initialize some variables. For example, the simulation rate is 48 and the growth rate is 0.1. Here I use the delta t of 0.01 and the number of iteration is simulation length over delta t. Population is a numpy array with the size of number of iteration and the population at zero is 100. And here is our code. For i in range number iteration, the growth is growth rate times the population and the population is population before that plus growth times delta t. Let's run this code. And this one. And here I use an uh, additional variables just to define the x axis that will start at zero and end at simulation length with the distance of delta t. And let's pl make a plot. And here is our plot. The bacteria population seems to grow over 12,000 in 48 hours. The model is written in simple differential equation. So we could solve the equation to get the analytical solution using integral. 
After solving this integral, we get ln b plus some constant equal to r times d. So we get b equals to a times exponent of rt. We substitute t equals to 0 to get b0 equals to a times exponent to 0. Then a is equal to b0. We also could simulate this in our code. So let's say we want to write down our code in a logical solution method. For this method, we will define a function that is our analytical solution that is 100 times exponential of growth rate times t. Let's run this code. And let's make this array time. The time is an array that starts with 0 and ends with simultaneous with distance of delta t. And population is a function of time. And let's start to plot the results. This result seems similar to the finite difference method. And for now, let's see how far the estimated results that we get from finite difference method with our analytical solution method. So, by the graph, the results are quite similar, but there are some differences if you look only at less number of the simulation. This error comes from the discretization of finite difference method, and we could minimize it by reducing the delta t variable. But of course, it will slowing down our program due to a large number of iterations. That's all for now. Let's discuss further in comment section if you are interested, and it would be awesome if you would support this channel by clicking likes and subscribe button. See you in the next videos.